channel. This is Yev's Builds. I'm Eugene. Behind the camera is Val. Uh, mm. Before we begin with this video, as you've seen earlier, if you have, if you're, if you're new to this, you have it, but I recommend going back. Our first video is uh, the M3 edit, okay? The M3 is mine. That's my personal car. I sent it right out there. This series that we're doing is a build for that specific car. It's a 2006 BMW E46 M3. Everyone knows it was fully repainted to an M5 color. Uh, it's a sapphire metallic black. That's the same M5 color that I've personally had before this car. I've had a manual E60 M5. Love that car, but I love the motor more than the chassis. So I got this car, and this whole build series is going to take a little while, but stick around with us. We're swapping a V10 E60 manual into this E46 M3. That is the block. It is fully disassembled currently. That is the transmission over there. Uh, it's a six-speed from an E92 M3. The block currently has 140,000 miles, so that's why it is fully disassembled because I am rebuilding pretty much the entire thing. We're replacing a bunch of stuff on the heads, a bunch of internal stuff, a bunch of you know piston rings and such. Rebuilding the entire thing just because I want it to last another 140,000 miles. Clearly, it's a keeper car. You know what I mean? Regardless, if you want more details about that, we could release a separate video. Yeah. But in this video, we are currently working on the heads. So, if you want your heads that look like this, looking like this, stick around for this video and I'll be explaining in detail of what we're doing. So unfortunately, I made the mistake of surfacing these heads before I've done any sort of labor on them. Surfacing the heads simply means that it's been taken to a shop, to a machine shop, and they've, laid, uh, they've machined off um, the surface to make it perfectly even and smooth and a very mirror finish. That is better for gaskets and whatnot, so anyway, that's a whole different thing. But I've done that prior to doing this job, okay? That's my fault. That's why I uh, put this tape on it, on, on pretty much this majority of the surface of the heads, both sides, just so I prevent as many scratches as possible. First step, after you cover all this up, what I do, pretty much, um, <laughs> we don't have the correct exact tools. As I said earlier, I don't, there's nothing really specific about these motors online. Forums don't say much besides, Oh, I took it to the shop and they did this job for me. They don't, they don't specify the tools. There's very little information about these specific motors online, unfortunately. So you kind of have to improvise. I know this is not by the books, but it's working. Take a little seven, 17, millim 17 millimeter socket, take an extension, you put it on top over here, make sure not to scratch. The edges of uh, you know don't scratch that because it's not good what you're gonna do is you're gonna break the seal if you hit it hard enough you might be lucky enough to, to get the keepers out um, that way you could pull the spray and go from there so this is what I do there we go both keepers out right there you pull them out you take take a little magnet tool pull this entire thing out clean them up dry them up remove them and voila, label them, put them all in order. There you go. Simple. What I did in this case, you want to divide all these just so the you know just so you would not lose any sort of order or anything. You want to put them all back to where they were after the entire procedure is done. So let's get to it, man. Let's get to it. you undo all the you know the keepers and the springs and you pull all those out um, you want to pull all the valves out and before you clean them which by the way also not by the books but this is working so my mechanic said what I do I labeled all of them from 1 to 10 in this case 1 to 10 on each side the exhaust side and the in, uh, intake side label them 1 through 10 here just so they'd be organized and you dip them into kerosene um, and just leave it overnight for, you know, the longer the better. It kind of eats away all the carbon buildup and it's easier to uh, remove it afterwards. Meanwhile, while they're all soaking up, you're going to want to remove the valve seals. Those are a pain in the ass to do. They just take a little bit of finessing, but pretty much you want to take a f uh, some pliers. You want to take some pliers. And what we did with these, since they were sharp nose, we cut them off with the grinder, made them a little bit more flat. That way it has more grip on the inside of the seal. If you come over here and look at it, those seals in there are just, they're really tied up in there and they're really annoying to take off because they're sealed on pretty well but pretty much this is what I do I kind of take it up um, we take them and you squeeze them and you kind of wiggle it around and you remove it this way it takes a long time so I'll just do one and you'll get the idea <laughs> and there's 20 of them per head <laughs> we've already done one but dude this takes forever man. so it took a little while man but 
here's here's the end result. You're gonna need to replace these anyway, so it doesn't matter, man. They're aluminum, they bend like nothing, dude. I mean, they bend super easily, you know what I mean? You do this to all 20 of them, and then we'll move on to the next step. After these valves are soaked in kerosene for a little while, I'll start with the intake ones, because they're the easiest ones. Look, they're already fairly clean, right? The intake ones are normally, typically, they are cleaner, right? So, in this case, it's really simple, because you just take a rag, and all this residue on top, it literally you just rub it off. So it's very simple to clean the intake ones. Look at that. Look at that. Clean. That's clean, man. And pretty much this is ready to go, except this, right? You're thinking, well, how do you get rid of this compound? This buildup. This is nowhere near by the books. But little disclaimer, this is not by the books. This is just how I do it. I'm not telling you to do it. This is not a how-to. This is just a little vlog tutorial kind of thing of what I'm doing. Anyway, you come up here and you take this tool. It's kind of dull. It's not sharp. Uh, but the point of this, it's not to get it pretty, but it's to get this uh, this buildup off. You don't put a lot of energy into it. It's just very minimal tapping like this, and pretty much it all removes, man. So this is almost ready, but it's not. So then I come up, come up here. I take this uh, 500 grit, very very fine sandpaper. It's helping me out by being really flat. This this uh, this, this top of the valve. So you just put it on a very flat surface like this this board, right? It's super flat. And you just kind of give it a few rotations. Look, before you hose me in the comments, I know, I know, this isn't typically how you do it, but bro, look, this is, this is just how I'm doing it. It's working out, you know? Give it a few twirls. There you go. It is clean. Look, again, the point is not to make it pretty. You want to just, you just want to remove all this crap off of it. So this valve is pretty much done. It is done. It's labeled, it's done. And you put this one aside. The intake valves are that simple. The exhaust valves, man. This, this takes longer. The buildup on the exhaust valves is much greater. So what I do, take the same tool, again, very gently, don't put a lot of pressure on it. This ridge right here indicates where the valve seal sits inside the head. You do not want to ruin this piece right here, simply because if you mess up the formation and the thickness of this valve stem, in this area specifically, it's very important, you're possibly gonna have leaks and your valves aren't gonna do much. What I do, you just kinda gently, very gently remove the very edge of this. So this is the crucial area, man. This, this ridge right here, this little line, that's the crucial area. All this doesn't really matter. Um, again, this tool doesn't scratch it. It's just it, it just goes underneath the, the corrosion and the uh, the buildup. After this crucial area, you can go a little bit a little bit harder at it. Again, it doesn't scratch it. Not in my experience. It's not scratching. It just kind of goes under the surface and it removes it, man. So after you remove majority of uh, this you know this buildup on the stem, you come up here and you this this is the hard part. This is what you got to remove now. What I do. This doesn't matter since it's flat. You kind of, I mean, dude, you really gotta put some energy and you gotta try to remove as much as you can. Some of them are easier than the others, um, but some you gotta go back to the sandpaper with a thicker grit, you know, more aggressive and whatnot. So as you can see, this chisel thing, it takes off the majority of the buildup, which is dope, because you gotta, you don't have to use the sandpaper as much. But then, just to clean it up, just for this tool, for the for the grinding tool, which is I'll show you later on, uh, you do want to come up to some sandpaper. I take a 320 grit, right? It's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit more harsh. Kind of make a few circles, just a little bit. There we go, it's pretty much flush. And then you take the, the 500 one, again, just to finish it off, just a quick little, you know, smoothing out the surface. As you can see here, this is flush enough for this tool to grab on and later on for you to grind the valves. But we're still not done. You slide all this build up over here. What I do, you come back, you take the side of this tool and you kind of you go a little bit harsh on it. It's not, this area does not matter, honestly. It doesn't sit on anything. It's just the shape of it. The only area that does matter is this first angled edge, right? Not this. Not the side one, but the slightly other one. This is the only side that matters. But in my case, it doesn't really matter because if you look closely, there's like little grooves in this. And in my case, I have to get these valves resurfaced. But for now, you just kind of chisel this off. Just make it somewhat, you know, clean. After this process, it's gonna look something like this. A bunch of stripes, a bunch of lines. 
not the prettiest, but still not good enough to pass through because you got to make them look like this. This is a little bit, it's, it's clean, but it's not standard or anything. It may look like it, but it's not. Yo, man, put some safety glasses on because this stuff is going to fly everywhere. You take a Dremel tool and you take one of these sponge-like uh, tips. You could buy them at Home Depot. It's not really going to scratch this. You want to be careful and you want to be safe. So what I do, uh, you just kind of, pretty much, you turn this on, you turn the Dremel on, and you, you let it run. Don't push on it, just let the weight of the Dremel itself kind of go on this, and don't hold it too long in one spot, because you don't wanna, if it does do anything, it's very, you know, if it does go, come through and it scratches too much, then you're just gonna have an uneven surface. You just kinda want it cleaned up, not pretty. When you're doing this stem, make sure not to go too close to where the seal sits, just because, again, you don't wanna ruin the surface of this, because you want a tight fit, when it's back in the head. Wear safety glass because this stuff flies everywhere, man. Don't want to get too close on the start, on the edge of, that I told you earlier, just because you know your valves might be better than mine are. But since I got I got to surface them anyway, you just kind of clean it all up. We're moving up over here. I use the same tool to kind of you know chisel out all this build up, just a little bit, you know kind of clean it up slightly. Again, make sure you do not touch these mirrored f surfaces on both, on both, you know, on all, on all of them, because this is where the valve sits. It needs, it needs that perfect closure. After, after you chisel them up though, I take the Dremel, again, same tool, and you just kind of go at it from, you know, wherever you can reach. Just clean it up as much as you can. So this is the next day. I picked up the valves, they got resurfaced. Now throw a clean, we have to grind these. You gotta get yourself a little tool like this. It's the most love-hate relationship tool you can have, dude. It's It sucks, but it, that's the only tool that's available to do this kind of stuff. Next, you're gonna need uh, this valve grinding compound. Also pick it up anywhere. I got this at O'Reilly's, it's a couple bucks. You want to apply a coat, a layer, a thick layer, you know, don't be, can be generous with it. Just be generous. You're gonna put it in its in its seating position. You pretty much want to do this motion, and then you want to flip it so it'd be getting a different location. You know what I mean? So it'd be evenly mated all around. And you gotta put some pressure down on it, which makes this thing kind of slip off, but regardless, you'll figure it out. After it's done, although, it's gonna be a, a matte kind of surface like that, right? The edge of where the, the valve is sitting and the cylinder head is gonna be matte on this side as well as the valve. You'll know when it's done grinding, um, the sound will change. It's gonna be less grindy, it's gonna be more creamy, you can say. And this is how you check. So it's a pretty even uh, matte line all around, both surfaces. But the way you know if it's done or not is you put it back in, dry, and if it's gonna be making a squeaky sound, it means it's not done. It's a grindy sound. This is good. It sounds like metal on metal, which means this is done. In this case, since it doesn't have any squeaky sounds, I, I'll just go over it again, put some more compound, just do two rounds. That's what these all marks are for. If it's, if it's good the first time, just go for it, do another round, just to be 100% sure. After you've done uh, mating them to the cylinder head, remove all the valves and put them in order from, you know, from, from where they're supposed to be sitting because you don't want to mix and match the position of the valves because now they are mated to that specific seating position. You want to pull them out and you want to lubricate them. Take some motor oil and you lubricate the stem and you drop it right in its place. Flip the head over, be careful and do it real fast because they're going to slip out because there's no seals yet. But this is where we come in. We put these valve seals on. These valve seals are very fragile. They're it's like aluminum. It's not focusing, bro. It's not. Regardless, it's a valve seal. It's just a valve seal, dude. Take some sort of tweezer tool, because I don't got specific tools for this, man. Like, this motor requires specific M5 tools that I do not know where to get. So you kind of work with what you got. You put them on top, and then you take this, little, this long socket, this 10 mil. You kind of put it on there. It fits right perfectly over this. You wiggle it around, make sure it goes in nice and easy and you seat it in its position. You will know when it's seated, but a good way to double check is to take a little hammer and kind of tap on it. It's gonna be a very metallic sound. If it's metallic, it means the head is seated properly and it's touching the surface of where it's sitting. After you get all of them in, pull the valve stems out. You could do it from the bottom. And then you move on to the springs and the keepers, which is the most annoying part of this, um, Build. Restoration. Restoration of this head, man. So the next step is putting the keepers on. That is a, is a very annoying process. There's tools out there for it, and I got one, but it doesn't work. This is supposedly for the right dimension for the width of the valve stem, but it's not working for some reason. The idea of this, and I wrapped it up to uh, not scratch the walls, but you're supposed to push it on, 
and you're supposed to kind of, ah, you know, kind of push on it real quick and it's supposed to, it, ideally, it's supposed to put the keepers back into place. But in this case, it's not working. So what we're gonna do, we've tried a bunch of different methods, it's not working. In our case, in our home kind of scenario, we take two wooden sticks, right? Kind of edgy, kind of pointy at the side, a little bit thick so they wouldn't snap on you. And we put them on the floor to create more pressure. One guy's supposed to push down the keeper and the, the, the little cap, while the other guy takes a pair of tweezers and puts the keepers back in. It's an annoying process, it takes a little long, but that's the only thing that's been working so far. So if you're making fun of me, it doesn't even matter because I'm doing this. That's it, it took us about five minutes to do both keepers on one spray. It's doable, make sure to like and subscribe and comment and all that, dude. Look, everybody says it, but it'd be cool if you guys do. And um, dude, there's gonna be way more episodes. The build is far from over. There's much more coming. Heads are done, but that's it for now.